and welcome back to the 2013 Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. We're here to celebrate the kind of business success stories that can be, that, that can be the foundations of a better future. And like all foundations, you rarely actually see them, but you really know you need them. Nobody knows that better than the thousands of people employed by tonight's nominees in the industry category. Brian Hogan has guided the Kylemore Services Group through many changes. Today, he employs 1,000 people at 120 sites across Ireland. What makes an entrepreneur is his ability to fail and get back up again, because we all fail. You work so hard, you have a vision, people don't believe in you, and then when it comes right, you look to be super and everybody's clapping you on the back, but nobody really remembers the dark days on the journey. I think fear of failure is something that we all have, but I think the successful ones are the people who don't let it run their lives. Under Seamus McCaig's leadership, Crea Concrete has thrived in challenging times. A focus on new products in new markets has enabled Seamus to build the workforce to higher than pre-recessionary levels. We kept dialogue going daily. Good communications in the company, and bit by bit the confidence and the belief came through 2009, 2010. Look, there is a way through this. We can get through this. Being part of this is about Crea Concrete. It's not about me, it's been part of Crea Concrete and been part of the communities and the parish and the whole area where I come from. I'd be conscious of that that I come, you know, I do it justice. Martin Hamilton wanted to add value to the land he farmed, so he launched Mash Direct in 2004. He's been harvesting impressive returns ever since. His family business now boasts revenues of 12 million pounds and 120 employees. Don't make one pack of it if you're not going to go out and sell it. If you're not going to go out and sell and market it as hard as you are putting the passion into producing it, you could produce a pile of product the size of Sleeve Donard, and if you're not going out there with a sales and marketing team, it'll sit like a mountain. Jimmy Martin and Austin Ryan co-founded Limerick-based AMCS Group to design software for the recycling and waste management industry. Employing 135 people, its technology currently services 10 million bins worldwide. If you start a business, you're, you're going to make mistakes, so never be afraid of that. I suppose the key thing is to limit the number of big ones and to learn quick from them. The energy we drive off on our, it's like an engine, you know. <laughs> when the piston kicks in, <laughs> the petrol lights come on and we complement one another a lot in that way. It's always vital that you get support from, from your family and loved ones and your friends and if they drive you on. I think that was key. A good wife as well. <laughs> was very key. <laughs> So like I didn't know, the key to business success is a good wife. Got to tell my husband that when I get home from work. But look, not before we meet the remaining finalists in the industry category. Caroline Keeling heads up the thriving Dublin food producer and distributor Keeling's. The enterprise, started by her grandparents in the 1930s, has now expanded into the UK, Europe and Asia and employs 2,000 people. It's really nice to be nominated um, and then quite proud of our team because um, obviously without the team doing all the hard work I wouldn't be here. I'm very passionate about the business. It's not very difficult to be passionate about a product you love eating yourself. There's a little bit of resilience in me when things are tough because they, they're always going to be tough. There's always going to be decisions you get wrong and you need to keep going. A decade ago, Kerry man John Rice set up Jam Media with two friends. With studios in Dublin and Belfast, the company is currently making the third series of the BAFTA-winning Roy for the BBC. I think I'm probably more creative in business than I ever was with a, with a pen and paper. I think if I have any talent, it's maybe to be able to see talent in others, build the teams around that talent. Um, I wasn't the best animator in the world when I used to draw, but I know animation, I know the business, I know what, what a great animator is. And instead of being the best animator, I can now, you know, hire and work with the best animators. In just 10 years, Liam Wolfe's Freshgrass Group has secured a 25% share of the fertiliser market in Ireland. And a new joint venture with French agri-giant group Roulier creates exciting opportunities for innovation. My father was a farmer 
and uh, there's no doubt about it, expansion and growth was part of his philosophy every day. We don't often give uh, we'll say the farming community credit for the challenges they go through because they're both a financier, a banker, a cash flow manager, a, a guy that has to do the work and, and ultimately the guy that has to be the family man. But all that, you know, is the ultimate in, in entrepreneurship. You know, when you're grown up in that environment, it's very hard for that not to rub off on you if you have an inclination in that direction. Peter Dixon was instrumental in introducing natural gas across the Irish Sea in the mid-1990s. With Kellen Investments, he has extended the network's reach to 170,000 homes and businesses in Belfast. I left school at 16. I had no qualifications. I lived in a poor housing estate. And someone gave me the greatest opportunity in my life 37 years ago, which was to have an apprenticeship. And from that moment on, I grabbed every opportunity I had as if it was the last one. Because the dreams of youth inevitably become regrets of maturity. I would tell people to live out their dreams as early as they possibly can. And tonight, one of our eight nominees is about to live out their dreams. And to announce who has won the industry category, will you please welcome Bobby Kerr from News Talk, Geraldine O'Leary of RTE Television, and John McManus of the Irish Times. Tonight's industry nominees exhibit real courage, identifying opportunity where others only see risk. Their booming businesses suggest the Irish economy is in safe hands. And the 2013 Industry Entrepreneur of the Year is... Brian Hogan. Brian Hogan has mastered the art of reinvention, transforming a traditional family bakery into a multifaceted food brand. The judging panel were particularly impressed with his ability to embrace change and to shape a future from his own vision. This fearless leadership has earned him the accolade, Industry Entrepreneur of the Year. That was really a surprise. Uh, Tónista, Minister, partners in EY, fellow finalists. Uh, what can I say? It's just amazing. Henry Ford famously said, you can take away my factories, just give me my people. And tonight's award is for the 1,000 people in KSG, the most brilliant group of people. Their passion, the focus, the drive, the determination, the sense of excellence about everything they do drives us every day. And it is just so refreshing every morning to go to work. Guys, this is for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And to the most important team, the team at home, my beautiful wife, Jane, our wonderful children, Julie, Sarah, Patrick, Davin and Gemma. Guys, you make my life special every day. Thank you. close up how much we at home actually benefit from new ideas in industry, but it's impossible to ignore how much this country depends on our reputation abroad and on the people who get out there and take on the world in our name. Well, tonight's nominees in the international category are continuing that tradition, bringing the best of Irish to the rest of the world and hopefully bringing the world to our doorstep. In 2006, Peter Cosgrove led the acquisition of precision engineering business ATA. From their Cavan base, the enterprise is now the world's leading manufacturer of tungsten carbide burrs 
for use in the metalwork industry? I have an optimistic nature, which I think you need to have. I have a high level of self-confidence, often not justified, but I continue to hold that level of self-confidence. I will be very competitive by nature. I, I want to win and I want my team to win. I actually love being in business, I always have. I love, I have a passion for business and for doing deals. So I think for me those, those attributes kind of combine and kind of fit very well into the uh, entrepreneurial game. Adair man Samuel Schein invented an innovative system which boosts the growth of maize in cooler climates. His family enterprise Samco now produces machinery and a range of degradable films that sells to farmers all over the world. When I was at school, and I can remember a long time ago, I suppose, uh, and, and dyslexia was a problem with me, I probably still couldn't spell entrepreneur. The education system is geared towards exams and results and studying, and some people don't get that. Every child has an attribute, and you have to focus on that. I would like, you know, in the education today, to be able to explain to younger guys that have vision, that, you know, you have to go for it. You, you can't uh, say no to an opportunity or an idea you have. You have to take it there. Husband and wife Linda and Dan Kiley co-founded VoxPro. They now have three locations in Cork where their 400 employees provide multilingual technical support for American organisations with European customers. Did I always want to work for myself? Yeah, because I didn't adapt very well to working for other people, so there's only one way to go then if that's the case. I've done many different jobs and had different careers. This is my third recession. You know, I just always react to, you know, whatever the climate was. It would be fantastic for Cork, fantastic for a Vox Pro, fantastic for all the people that, were, that we work with. Um, so I would be um, over the moon if we, if we won the competition. After taking over Callan Bacon in the 1980s, John Walsh invested heavily in plant and equipment. The company's turnover is now 60 million euro and international markets are being conquered with his new Rib World brand. I'm quite competitive irrespective of what I do. And of course, like everybody else, like every other single person in this competition, I would like to win. I'm very focused to the point of being tunnel visioned. I would be a risk taker and then occasionally a little bit lucky. Well, I can tell you from experience that many of tonight's entrepreneurs depend on that occasional bit of luck. But as the great golfer Gary Player said, the more you practice, the luckier you get. Let's see some of the hard work put in by the final four nominees in the international category. Husband and wife team Liam Church and Fanula Higgins run the Escher Group. This global leader creates cutting-edge retail technology and postal service software and employs over 250 people. An opportunity has to arise. In our case, it was exposure to a number of US-based companies, including a meeting I had with Bill Gates. You got the feel that actually, you know, with the right idea, you can get out there and, 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 and do something actually do something on your own, go on your own. You know, there's lots more things we have to do. I mean, we're in 35 countries in the world right now. But, you know, there's another 165 out there. And I think winning something like this will actually solidify our position. Galway native James Murphy heads up Life's Too Good, a health and wellness enterprise with offices worldwide, including Chicago, Sao Paulo and Sydney. Its primary product is Viviscal, designed to treat hair loss. My father was a vet and what he used to do was buy and sell horses. And I was just always intrigued by how he was able to pick a horse and then sell him as a three-year-old. And I think what I learned from him was, you know, make sure you turn that horse out the best it can be. And so I took that into our products, into the business. You know, there's no such thing as, as mediocre. You have to be the best. You have to make sure it's as good as you're capable of doing. Lorcan Barden and Leslie Bates were longtime employees of Kilmore Key's seafood company, Saframar. In 2000, they bought out the business and trebled its turnover exporting shellfish to Europe and Asia. Well, we felt there was a lot of uh, unrealised potential in the business, that there's new opportunities to be exploited, and we felt if we had control of the business that we could take advantage of this. When I started here 30 years ago as a general operative, I work seven days a week. I believe you, you learn on the job. To become managing director of it and to, to, uh, to own it has been is fantastic. When Patrick Joy founded Sure Tank in 1995, the company made just one type of liquid tank for use in oil rigs. Now Sure Tank is an industry leader, employing 700 worldwide and manufacturing in seven countries, including Ireland, Thailand, China and Brazil. When I went to college, I did engineering. 
and I work for other people. And I was probably difficult to manage because I always had my own ideas and I always wanted to do things my way. But eventually I started my own business. And I would never have sort of categorized myself as an entrepreneur then. But now when I meet other people, you begin to see all the characteristics that define people who set up their own businesses and grow their businesses. Now I know what an entrepreneur is and I'm happy to put myself into that category. Well, it took Patrick all these years, as he said, to find out that he showed all the signs of being an entrepreneur, but I'm sure all eight nominees are keen to find out which of them is actually the 2013 winner. Well, to announce the international award, please welcome Tom Hayes from Enterprise Ireland, Margaret Harty from Intertrade Ireland, and Jeremy Fitch from Invest Northern Ireland. The world may be getting smaller, but that just means the competition is getting closer. In Ireland, we can no longer rely on a nod and a wink and a bit of charm. The nominations in the international category have shown real global awareness and instincts. This year's International Entrepreneur of the Year is... Patrick Joy. <laughs> In one of the most competitive industries of all, Patrick Joy has created a manufacturing brand with a global footprint and an unbeatable reputation. SureTank solutions have become a critical link in the operations of the world's largest companies. An inspirational Irish ambassador, Patrick Joy is the 2013 International Entrepreneur of the Year. Guys, the, I, I'm absolutely uh, flabbergasted. Uh, and I think Brian Hogan stole my speech. Uh, uh, I didn't write a speech, Brian, so maybe you can send it up to me. But genuinely, um, there are three groups that I really have to thank, uh, specifically through my career. And the first one is my employees in SureTank. Uh, we have 700 people worldwide, and just under 200 now in Dunlear. They're a fantastic group of people, very innovative, and without them, the business would not be where it is today, and they're going to grow it so well in the future. As with all us entrepreneurs, we have to mention, we have to recognize that we can't do it without family. And in particular, my wife Mary, who allowed me, who, who encouraged me uh, through my career, who pushed me out the door, allowed me to go out while she looked after the family. Mary, thank you very much. This is as much yours as it is mine. I love you. Great. Thank you. Well, of course, tonight is primarily a celebration of the tenacity of Irish business, as we just heard from our last award winner, and of the individuals who battle through adversity to thrive in difficult economic times. However, in recent years, we all know so well in this country of individuals, businesses and communities that have really struggled to weather the storm. So tonight, we want to shine a light on an aspect of Irish life, every walk of Irish life, that is all too often shrouded in darkness and all too often suffered in silence. Ask any successful entrepreneur and they will tell you that communication is key. Talking is core to any business, it's how we plan, it's how we sell, it's how we do what we all do every single day. We're a nation of storytellers, we have an undoubted talent for talking, but sometimes there remains something unspoken. Being involved in hurling and being involved with an all and winning team, it brings a lot of trials and tribulations, but one area that's often neglected is on the mental side. It's not easy to play up to the 80,000 people. Mental capacity means a lot of things. It means dealing with life, dealing with your own demons as you go to play. That's important for sport, it's vital, but it's also vital for, for life. When we twist an ankle, it's quite acceptable to go off to the physiotherapist to get it fixed. But when mentally we're not quite right, 
there's a real stigma around is it okay to go off and see a psychologist or a counsellor or someone who can wrap an arm around my shoulder and, um, and help me on the journey. That's unusual and I think we need to be able to have the dialogue that it's absolutely okay not to be okay. So much responsibility as an entrepreneur to look after your employees, to look after yourself, to look after your family. It's very hard to put up your hand and say, I'm struggling. I think mental health is so important, but people don't really focus on it so much because there's so much pressure to be successful. It's a sign of strength, not a sign of weakness, to say I need help. In my own case, uh, I had a pretty large construction business which became a casualty of the recession. As a result of that, I had my own dark days. Um, I'm not saying that, uh, that uh, I went down into hell or anything like that, but I was very grateful of the ability to talk to friends. Don't bottle it up inside. Don't think, as a man particularly, you're a slave to the macho image of sorting it out yourself because it's not the done thing to admit to any form of weakness. I think we have a notion that entrepreneurs, people at the top of the firm, the CEOs, the directors, are immune from feeling low. They're exactly the same as everyone else. But in fact, it might be even a little bit more difficult because they've got to give the impression that they're coping. As entrepreneurs, we are wired differently. We are deeply passionate, we're hugely energetic. Um, we do have a vision and we're great at convincing people that this is going to work. It's a long and lonely journey. There are some deep, deep, deep dark troughs at night when you're there in hotel rooms and airports and hotel rooms and airports and you're on your own. You've got nobody to share this with. You're walking alone. And I don't think we should ever walk alone. This time next week, 10 more people will die by suicide and eight of them will be men. Women tend to talk face to face and I think men tend to talk shoulder to shoulder and I think it's really important that men start turning to each other and talking face to face. It's a great thing. The relief is immense. You've got to adopt an attitude of together we can do this. Everyone's got to buy into that. Together we can do this, but individually it's not possible. You can run a business without lots of stress and especially in the economic environment at the, at the moment. So maybe it's a chance for us to open up and, and, and discuss uh, the pressures and the trials and tribulations. We as a community of entrepreneurs, we actually have a responsibility to do this. It's good for us, it's good for our community, it's good for business. And I hope we can all take something away from that. It's good to talk and it's absolutely vital to listen. Join us after the break when we will name the 2013 Entrepreneur of the Year.